Wait one second to make sure I'm recording. I should be recording now. Yep, I am recording. Hello and welcome to Siren's Call. I need to figure out what button it is to continue. I think it's just click yes. Uh, sorry. Before we properly begin, I need to click all these buttons. It took a while for this thing to load up. I was waiting here like two minutes just for this thing to load. Well, hello and welcome to Random Days Random Games. And in today's episode, we're playing Siren, Siren's Call, a psychological horror day and simulator anime styled game. I think that's the best that I can describe it. Like, uh, Doki Doki Liter Literal. I can't say Literature Club. Okay. Do 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 do. Okay. Okay. And okay. All that I expect from a psychological order. Okay. Now this is a free game on Steam if you're interested in it. But you know, pause and read these just in case. Before you decide to play. Uh, let's see. For a reason. Best cause, stop playing. Okay. Okay, there we go. Ah, the scheme is a work of fiction, you know all that stuff. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just enjoying my water now, just reading all this stuff. That is a cool, you know, thing for a studios, the pen sword. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw something inappropriate there. Uh, okay, lose yourself in Siren's Call. Now before I properly begin, I will turn music all the way down as I do not want music on. Okay, new game. Okay, so hopefully you are all doing okay today and staying safe. A writer is conjectured unable to tell the truth and that is why we call what he writes fiction fiction is a lie as all which we tell the truth William Faulkner and Albert Camus Camus yeah, let's see the story of this story is work fiction you know they keep throwing it in your face yeah, let's see. Sirens Call, Florida, May 12th, 2011. About 11 years ago. The Cape is. The Cape just fired another rocket into the sky, but nobody is looking at it. They're looking down at the heartless asphalt. They're panicking. But I won't look down. I can't. So I keep looking up at the ro this rocket. Rockets. No matter what the experts say, rockets only exist for one purpose. They're tickets. They're our ticket for leaving home. A prototype of our salvation. Everyone, everybody knew knows that. Everyone knows where. Wait, everyone, everybody knows it. Everyone knows we're going and need to get the hell off this planet. <sighs> Bye. 
But the slaughter has amusement parks, beaches and bottomless margaritas, so it helps. So it's good at helping people ignore how pooped we are. Yeah, let's see. They still know though. Everyone knows. Everybody knows. But nobody talks about it. It's just like... That duplicity of Florida. It's our gateway to the cold inedible. In, in, inedible. In, inedible. It's not food. Unknown. And our own personal lattice land. Lotus land. To here we arrive. From here we shall leave. That is our claim to fame. Oh, and the weather. I guess this is like a sign. Hurricane. That's right, we're famous for our hurricanes. Maybe someday, we've when all of our bags are packed and our fancy new rockets are stuffed to the brim with human cargo, a giant hurricane will inexplicably cover the state. We'll be trapped, forced to live the consequences of our actions. We'll be unable to run away. And I love people, but there is a part of me that kind of wants something like that, I think. It'd be nice if there was some sense of justice in all this. But I love people too much. Even if they're confusing and inconsistent, I want to lift people up. Good people lift each other up, each other, higher and higher towards where they're meant to be, towards their own personal heaven. Not because it's easy, because it's right. Yeah, good people are like rocket fuel. Or maybe they're more like fuel tank itself, burning away their combustible innards. Kinda gruesome, eh? I wonder does anybody even go fish those fuel tanks out of the ocean? Are they required to? Yeah, they always bring the fuel tanks back. Yeah, let's see, I doubt it. They're just empty husk after all and they can be reused, rebuilt, remelted. Everything, you know, can be remelted and brought into something new. Even so, somebody has to be a fuel tank. Might as well be me. It'd rather it be me than anyone I care about. I'd rather it be me than Violet. Me. Violet. Wait. Am I thinking about this? What? Why am I thinking about this? People were panicking just now. They were panicking so much that nobody was watching the rocket. But wouldn't that be considered normal? Oh, is this kind of like, you know, in 2011, you know, how everyone thought the world was going to end and all that. Even in 2000, they all thought the world was going to end. And in 2006, they all thought the world was going to end. Oh, so this is a cool painting style of, you know, they did a pretty good job on that artwork. But wouldn't that be considered normal? Isn't it normal to be afraid? Maybe I'm wrong about this, all this stuff. Maybe we don't need to be trapped here by a hurricane or whatever. Yeah, the world was lovely once, and it an third battle garden of, I can't even say that word, veritable garden of Eden. But maybe that's not what we need to need to mature as a species. Isn't you know people say that the garden of Eden is on uh, the Tiger River? I think it's called in the Middle East. Yeah, let's see. They do like a bunch of, you know, things up and down it, trying to find where it is and all that. Things might just be better somewhere else, after all. 
Isn't it, isn't that why we all worked so hard to help you leave? Lose yourself in Siren Call. It is really like paint. Oh, do you remember that Mickey Mouse paint game back in the day? When you had that other paint companion? I always wanted to play that game. It was only co-op though. I'm pretty sure it was only co-op. You have five new messages. First message. Hey there, college boy. It's mom. Well, Violet's mom anyway. Obviously. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. I can't believe you're actually going to college. I'm so proud. Anywho, I'll be back from Denver later tonight, assuming there's no delays. I'll probably be tired, so I'm just going to drop off my luggage and then we'll make a beeline for your hotel. We won't have time to drive through anywhere. So you should probably eat something before I pick you up. I'll likely be back at by 8.30, so make sure you're ready to go by then, okay? What else, what else? Uh, oh, can you make sure Violet cleans a bit before I get there? I doubt you two made much of a mess, it's just uh, extra work, you know. No pressure though. I'm well. Enjoy the day. Can't wait to hear about your summer. College. How exciting. Get ready! End of message. To delete message, press 9. Saved message. Dude, it's 2011. Get a cell phone. You're literally the only person I leave voicemails for at this point. I'm not doing this anymore once you move to Asheville. I mean it. It's dumb even. Emil isn't that backwards. I'm pretty sure he still carries around a pack pocket watch, not a packet watch. Anyway, I'll be on Fledger, Fledger at the usual spot. I buy you a burger or something, so come on down whenever. Later, bro. End of message. To delete message, press 9. Next message. Hey there, nerd. It's Andy. You're not getting out of training just because it's your last day in town, you know? We have to cut it a bit short today, but that's fine, as long as you make time to go back home and say goodbye to Judy as well. You are planning on doing that, right? You know, she'd be devastated otherwise. Well, whatever. I'll be warming up at the park, so hurry over, uh, uh, hurry on over. It's hot, so, so bring some water if you don't want to die. Or don't, your call. Bye! End of message. To delete message, press 9. Next message. Oliver, Ilm here. I was wondering if you finished up with the book yet. We might not get another chance to discuss it in person, given the circumstances. And I can't think of a better way to spend the day. I'll be at the library when you're ready. Also, one other thing. Have you been deleting these voicemails like we discussed? I doubt anything would come of it. Be but it's best to leave our trail cold simply as a precaution. You're our leader, so I'm sure you'll be on top of things paranormal. Paranormal. But I figured it'd be... Wouldn't hurt to remind you just in case. Regardless, I see you soon. Stay sharp. End of message. To delete message, press 9. Oliver? Oliver? Hi, how are you? 
How's Violet? Here's Judith, by the way. Not handy. I know we sound similar over the phone, so I didn't want to confuse you again. Um, happy last day of summer, I guess. Are you feeling okay? Do you have any plans for today? I know you probably have to pack, of course, but after that, are you doing anything fun? It's the last day of summer, so it should be fun, right? You're probably busy, though. I'd be busy, too, if I was going to college. That's why you didn't answer the phone, right? Because you're busy. I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Um, if I don't see you again, good luck at college. Make sure to let us know when you're back in town for breaks and stuff, okay? Okay, good luck out there. Thank you, Oliver. Goodbye. You're not too bad of an art style for this game. Bye. Uh, let's see. End a message. Delete message. Press 9. There are no new messages. To repeat saved messages. Press 1. Now. Say goodbye to your friends. Investigate house. Window. Yeah, beautiful silent summer day. Waits for me outside. Fun stuff. No, it might be fun. If it, it might be fun. I just gotta have to have the right attitude. I've just gotta keep going forward. Suitcase. It shouldn't take me more than a few minutes to pack up all of my clothes. Hey, as long as I'm back a little bit before 8.30, everything should be good. I guess one of the perks growing up poor is that you really have not much to need to pack. I messed up there so I just tried to do that thing improv. It's kind of handy actually. Yes, having hands on your suitcase. Handy. Now that's invest that's uh, investigation over. I should probably destroy this or something. Pretty sure Emil has recorded all the important stuff anyway. Even so, it's hard to just let it go, let stuff go up in flames like that. No, I can't get sappy. The smart thing is to do is just leave it all behind. I've already made my choice when I get up to Asheville, I'm burning this. End of story. Violet's bed. Violet's bed. She still hasn't changed the sheets from last time, has she? Well, goodbye gross bed sheets, goodbye Mr. Dolphin and Mrs. Donkey? Don't you dare tell anyone what we did in here. Miss L's room. Quite a like, fancy posh room over here. I shouldn't be in here. Why am I in here? Even though she has not been here all summer, I'm still a guest in Miss Lawrence's house. I should respect her privacy. But if she hasn't been in her room for this long, then how am I supposed to know if it does it still smell like wine? Yeah, let's see. Bass guitar. I played all summer, even though Violet keeps asking me to. Yeah, let's see. There just has not been enough time, honestly. I can only play a few ska songs anyway. Don't even know what ska means. Or ska if it's a band. Even if I enjoy playing them, that's still nothing worth showing off. Nobody remembers the bass players much anyway. Well, almost nobody, I guess. Spice Rack. He has served a number of spices hang from off the wall. 
One of the jars labelled Spice of Love is almost empty. Is that the stuff she keeps sprinkling on top of my burgers? Eh, I allow it. Maybe it's a secret ingredient to be a healthy relationship. Nah, it's poison. You just resist it so much. Couch. As much as I want to lay down for a bit, it's irresponsible to sleep my life away. What time are we at anyway? 20 minutes. Sounds like something Dad would say, at the very least. Then again, maybe lack of sleep is why he always so cranky. That's still on him though. That's always gonna be on him. Uh, food processor. There's bits of black bean burger stuck on stuck to the inside of the food processor. I guess Violet already made herself some lunch. Adorable. She's such a little herbivore, I swear. Kinda weird that I didn't hear that thing going off while I was sleeping though. I wonder why that is. It's from last time. Uh, let's see. The stack in the living room is way smaller than it was re yesterday. The ne this next project of hers must be really important if she's bringing so many backup canvases. I hope she didn't have trouble carrying all them out of the door. Why didn't she wake me up? I would have been more than happy to help her. New gallery image has been unlocked. Okay. Hmm. I guess we leave the house. Leave the house, yes. Ah, yes. The many different places. I guess we start with the first one, the burger guy. It's always good to meet the burger guy. You know what, this guy kind of reminds me of the guy from a uh, Delhi's Delight game. Have you played that game before? I played that game on the channel not that long ago. That was a pretty good game. I did play through the entire game, it was quite fun. Hey there Oliver, lovely weather we're having today, huh? Someday I don't recognise says something to me while I'm walking. As nondescript and generic at this moment, as this moment is. I'll still make an effort to smile and wave as we pass each other by. Ash is sitting outside of Jake's crab bucket, playing on his cell phone. He seems to notice me approaching, though I get the gets up and gets up from his seat, slipping. His phone closed in <laughs> process. Uh, slip phones back in the day. Ah, uh, good phones. Nokia's. Hey, dude. He only looks at me for a second before turning towards the restaurant. You hungry? I'm hungry. So let's get some food. Best character. Hey, let's see. Oh, I'm buying, but you got to order water if you're first day, okay? You can get whatever food you want, but I'm not paying three dollars for a soda. Money's kind of tight right now. Doesn't take long for Ash to place our order. It always gets a steakhouse. I always get a steakhouse burger. Whenever I come here, anyway, I guess he picked up on that. He even remembers that I like mine medium rare and tells the waitress as much during our order. It's a real treat to watch him accommodating like this, given how abrasive he is, he is sometimes. Normally whenever the six of us eat, Ash just plays on his phone until the food ra arrives, letting Emil and Judith do most of the 
strategizing. There's nothing normal about today, though, is there? I'm going to be real, man. Things were really poopy before I met you. Ash immediately jumps into it, as brazen as always. He fiddles with the bandages on his waist before eventually squeezing it with his right hand. And af even after that, I still pretty sure that Summer was going to be lame, no offense. I had planned it all out that I was going to work with my dad on the weekends, maybe hop online at night and play some bone sword with you and a meal. I was going to keep on trying poop like that over and over again. The next day and the next until, I don't know. Until I started feeling like an actual adult, I guess. That was the plan. That was my plan. It was all I had. Well, sometimes plans change. Ashton. Crawl. Crawl. Quals? Crawls? How do I say this word? Word. Quarrel. Crawl. Call. Skulls. Skulls. Skull. 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 Squirrels. Squirrels? No, not squirrels. I don't know how to say this world. What well, word? Not world. Word. Put in more pressure on his waist. Well, wrist. Did I say waist the last time? I think I might say it waist the last time. Never thought I end up being a hero. Did he even know something like that was possible for a guy like me? I always thought I was just some jerk. Just another one of those punks at school no one gives a poop about until once you're not stuck in the same class as them anymore. The kind of kid that's stuck being a kid forever. It's crazy how things ended up though. You were amazing. I feel amazing. Every time we came out the other end of that locker, I had to make the make peace with the fact that tonight could be the night. We all could have died back there, you know. We never really talked about it much, but we definitely could have just ate, pooped and died, right? And my old man would have had no way of knowing what happened to me. I used to think that oh, about that part a lot when we first started, like what would happen to my body and stuff. Didn't know if anybody would be able to find it. Wasn't sure if I rot back there, and then if I end up like those guys they found with those their heads split open on the sidewalk. I didn't know which would be worse, honestly. It would be really creepy going into that place every night, but I think being brave isn't the absence of fear. Absence of fear. Bravery is doing what needs to be done, even if it's scary. I do really like the background. It's quite nice. It's like a painting, proper painting. Like oil painting. Even if you're tired, Terrified, not tired. I used to be such a coward back in high school, starting fights that I never had the chance of losing. I, it's always not enough just to fight though. It has to be a fight you might not win. I feel like I finally earned the right to view myself as brave now. I feel brave, I feel amazing. I don't really know what I'm going to gonna do now, though. All, all the important stuff is over, so I guess it's time for me to start acting like an actual adult. Re regress. Hmm. I guess we have different options. Save. Just making sure. 
Okay. I didn't expect a tire menu. How's your wrist healing up? My wrist? Yeah, it's it's healed. It's healed. It stings a bit though. I don't know if you saw, but that thing bit down to the bone when it attacked me. If it wasn't for a meal jumping in, I'd probably have a hook for a hand. Which would be dope, but a little harder to explain to the old man. Know what I mean. Kinda excited to see how the scar ends up looking though. Not going to lie. I don't really know what I'm going to do now though. All the important stuff is over, so I guess it's time for me to start acting like an actual adult to regress. So you really think it all it's all over? There. That's what Emil says anyway. And that nerd hasn't been wrong yet. I'm sure we'd be fine there. Fine. Those sudden death incidents were happening a bunch before, right? And now we've gone two weeks without anyone everybody anybody season. That's got to mean something, dude. Not only that, but the backside of the locker being completely dead every time we've gone and since. I get where there you're coming from, but that place is a total wasteland now. So relax, you're, you did good. We all did good. I don't really know what... I'm going to do now though. All the important stuff is over so I guess it's time for me to start action, acting like an actual adult. Working at B Mobile with my dad probably hasn't got cut a dough. Hmm. It looks like I can go back if I don't like the decision that I made. Working at B Mobile I don't want to be one of those dudes that peak when he was 18. I don't think that's going to be good enough anymore. But it's pretty hard to top any everything that's happened to us. When I do though, I want to be able to let my brother in arms know about it. So, Ashton places something on the table. A brand new cell phone, along with a pretty slick looking case to go with it. This is for you. I'm not going to be the one of those guys you're, you were friends with in high school and then never ended up talking again. I can't help and hide, help but try and hide my discomfort, the discomfort. As Ashton slides the phone across the table. What, you weren't going to buy one anyway. So take it. We had some spares laying around the house anyway. I'm sure Dad won't miss it. I do as I am told. I put Ashton's gifts, gift in my bag. You're the only one of us actually leaving Florida. So I figured you're going... You're going... You're the one that's going to need a new phone the most. Emil, Judy and Andy are all within walking distance and Violet isn't leaving Siren's call anytime soon. So that only leaves you. We can't talk about what happened with other people. So it's important we still have a way to keep in touch, isn't it? Like we fought together, dude. We bled together. You're not just going to drop off the face of the earth, right? Of course not. Okay, cool. You better keep to that. When I start my new life as an adult, I want to be able to know about it. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix my posture.
very uncomfortable. Don't tell the others, but I've been thinking about getting a houseboat when I'm finally able to move out of my dad's place. Got no idea what I'm going to do for a job though. Hey, I know pirates aren't really a thing anymore, but how about detectives? We've got some expertise in solving mysteries now, don't we? Maybe if the whole higher education thing doesn't work out, you can move back down here and the two of us can start something up. There might be even a way to turn what we did in the underworld into something that makes us some serious cash. I've been nice. Been, I'd be nice to keep doing what we've been doing, but actually get paid for it. It'd be nice. That's it. What do you think about that, my dude? Ah, uh, sorry if I, you know, struggle with the speaking sometimes. Uh, let's see. We talk about Ashton's ideal future until our food arrives. After a bit, we finish eating, and Ashton, true to his word, foots the bill. Poop. I guess this is it, huh? Ah, uh, sure, I'm sure you got the, you got, you've got other things you got to do, so I'll leave you to it. Ashton walks over and hands me a small slip of paper with his phone number, his phone number on it. Give me a heart attack, that sound. Give me a call once in a while. You've touched down in Asheville. Right, alright. I love you, bro. Thanks for the adventures. What a nice person. You just gotta stand there, mate. Oh, I clicked right click. Uh, I acknowledge Ashton sincerely with a reassuring thumbs up. I'll see you soon. Stay cool. Okay, I guess we're on to the next person. Journal pages 2 through 6 have been recalled. Okay, the next adventure. We finished this place. Now we have... Yeah, we, we could head all the way around and go backwards, or we could just go this way. I think we just gotta go this way. Burger time. It's over. And now it's just exercise time. Also, I'm recording this at like 3.59 now. Hey, let's see, what time are we at? 38. I can go a little bit longer. Hey, kid. How's your lady friend doing? Pass her by. Somebody I don't recognize says something to me while I'm walking. As nondescript and generic at this point, this moment is, I still make an effort to smile and wave as we pass each other by. These oblivion NPCs are going too far, huh? Andy is doing some pull-ups on a set of bright green monkey bars. At first it almost seems like she is in some sort of trans trans completely focused on the rhythm on of her workout you know what this looks like a diglet you know when the diglets go up and down uh, I haven't played Pokemon Fire Red in ages I should really play it sometime yeah let's see remember just loading up low ah. That scared the life of me for a second. But then I stepped into our domain and like some sort of homo homicidal, not homicidal, homicidal jungle predator, Andy flings herself into the air and starts barreling towards me. Hey there, Slum. Glad you finally made it. Without missing a beat, Andy stands up straight, walks over, and slaps me on the butt. That is how you do it at the gym. You slap people on the butt. 
You ready to run? We don't have a whole lot of time left to dwaddle, you know. Come on, let's get out over. The let's get out there. Ah. She already several yards away from me by this time. I'm done processing everything that just happened. As silly as the exercise seems right now, I know better than to try and fight her on this. And so I do, as I am told. I start jogging after my friend. What a nice background. Our route pretty much takes us all over the island. With the exception of few motivational insults to keep me moving, Andy stays mostly quiet as we cut our way through Siren Call. That is, of course, until we get to his house. You already met up with him today, right? So he should be home by now. And he peeks over the dilapidated fence, staring into the dark grove uh, of palm trees and ferns. Sheldon Ashton's home. Uh, his TV isn't on. I swear, if that boy isn't out of working, I am gonna bop him into next week. Hey, Trashton, unless you're ambidextrous, there's no way you're going to be able to. What? Sing you. You know. You need to whisk that bowl. You can't really do that. You have a broken wrist. You know, you need to move it all around. The bowl. You can't really do that with a broken wrist. You know, making pancakes and all that. Some brownies, muffins. Yeah, okay. I did not expect this kind of writing and language. And he waits for some sort of response. But no lights slick on from within the house. And the voices come bearing sarcastic retorts from the bramble. Unreal. Moron. Doesn't he know that your body can't heal itself if you keep putting pressure on it? If he's... Out there, out here, lifting boxes with his bum of a father, when he should be resting. She grits her teeth and begins sprinting away from the property. Oddly enough, the air around me is insult free for the rem remainder of our jog. A ah, nice place. After some time, Andy and I reach the halfway point of our normal route, the raid walkway in front of, of our old high school. Andy, for some reason, looks as though she's about to vomit. I barely have any time to rest before she turns back around and starts jogging again. Sorry, but we're not stopping here. Even if the rest of us are still alive, that school will always reek of death. And nothing can change that. I think there's been like a school shooting here or something. Come on, I'm not slowing down. We'll do stretches back at the park. Alright. Even though my body is numb with fatigue, I do as I am told and follow Andy. After what feels like hours, we finally make it back to the park. I find the nearest bench and collapse on it. Andy, unfazed, throws her right leg up on a picnic table and begins stretching. Oliver, we've been over this. If you don't stretch immediately after running, you're just gonna be sore in the morning. Get up, you need to get 
in the habit of doing this. Get up and stretch. After I siphon myself up a bit, I do as I am told and walk over to Andy. We stretch our bodies using the crusty wood of a picnic table. I hate the kind of picnic tables. You know, the ones that are just falling to bits and have cobwebs all over them? Horrible, eh? They can't even put, you know, proper wood that lasts a long time into tables. Picnics. And the people have to sit on the grass and sometimes it's soggy. Wet, soggy grass. I hope you realise how important it is to actually do this kind of stuff. Even if you're okay with being sore tomorrow, you need to be able to defeat the voice in your head that's telling you to relax. That's the very real reason we do this, Captain. It's not even really about being healthy, it's more about being able to win every argument you have with yourself. It's about destroying the parts of you that are weak. It's about willpower. And Andy smiles at me, clearly satisfied with her monologue, and sits down on the table, signaling, signaling to me that our workout is over. You see right now you're still inexperienced. So your mind is like a ball of wet clay, wet clay, not wet clay, wet clay. When outside forces put pressure on it, it uh, conform into whatever shape it needs to be in order to be comfortable. Exercise is an outside force, except unlike most things, we get to decide when we're exposed to that. Which is perfect. If we know what pain is coming, then we can use it. We can use the pain to condition ourselves and fight those urges. Is that... what's that back there? What is that? Is that... Oh, it's, a, it's one of the pot thingies. Oh, for, for some reason. I saw that was like a bench or a table over there, and I was wondering why there was a tree on top of it. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Let's see. Also, why is there... Oh yeah, we're in Florida. I was wondering why there's palm tree. Did you know palm trees in America are actually dying out quite a lot due to a bug eating the inside of the trees? Quite a sad thing. You know, you bring all these trees from, you know, foreign lands and now they're all dying. We can use the pain to get, yeah, we already read that. We can use it to kill the parts of us that are slow and weak. And once that weak part of you is dead, there's nothing left but strength. Which is, which I promise is going, going, going to come in handy once you start doing all nighters or whatever. Your brain is going to be all I can I can just do this essay in the morning. I should sleep, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be all, shut up brain, you don't control me. And then you think, well, Andy's so cool for making me stretch. I should buy her something nice next week when I go visit her and Judy. So yeah, get good. Hmm. Thank you for worrying about me, coach. Okay, we go with this. Of course, it'd be stupid if I wasn't worried. As dependable as you are, I don't think anybody can be fully prepared for adulthood. Yeah, the old farts like to shoot advice our way any chance they can get. But the truth is that adulthood is entirely different beast for each person. We have no way of knowing what worked for them is going to work for us, work out for us. There's no way you can know 
for sure what's going to happen when you get to Asheville. You could get mugged outside the airport or seduced by one of those dorm mates only to find out they're a mass murderer who keeps their victims severed toes in a jar. That's quite the, this is the description. Or you know a bi biology. Might be kind of tough. In all honesty, it'd be fine, really it could. But you don't know what's going to happen to you. There's no way you can know. So the only thing you can do is make sure you're strong enough to handle anything the outside worlds can throw at us. If some maniac tries to chop your toes off, if I want to be able to make sure you have a strong enough body to take them on. And a strong enough mind to not panic once you realise what's going down. Because if you were going to... Well, you're like family at this point. Judy would be devastated. Which reminds me. I'm sure you already know that Judy wants to see you one last time before you leave, right? Have you gone to see her yet, Oliver? No, not yet. Well, I know what we're going to do then. And he grabs my arm and yanks me off the table. You smell like poop, but you can always wash up in the pool when you get home. I'm sure my sister will be thrilled to see you. Let's go, Captain. I'm too worn out to fight back, and so I do as I am told and follow her back to her house. Pages 7 through 14 have been recalled. Uh, let's see. Quite a nice game so far, even though it has psychological horror in it. We're just, you know, dipping our toes into this game. Sorry, we're almost at one hour. Thanks to Andy's brisk walking pace, the two of us make it back to Joseph's place rather quickly. Even more than usual, the inside of the house is spacious and inviting. Welcome back, sis. I breathe in the cool air as Judith greets her sister from the kitchen. The sweet smell of vanilla extract and chocolate fills my dry nostrils. Andy slaps my back and gives me a thumbs up. Good job cooling down from our run. I'm going to go change and jump into the pool. Judy folded uh, your whims swimsuit this morning and put it on the same in the same spot as last time. So make sure you change quick and have her go out with you, alright? At another word, Andy dashes away from me and towards her bedroom, running past the kitchen in the process. Hey, sexy, I brought the captain over, so hurry up with that. <laughs> what? He's here already? Why didn't you call me? I still have so much left that I need to do. Adapt. Overcome. You're so mean. Ah. I can hear Andy's laughing. Manality. Sometimes I struggle with words to get them off to form properly. In the distance as she runs up the stairs and slams the door to our bedroom shut. I peek around the corner into the kitchen and wave sh sheepishly to Judith. Judging by... Sorry. Judging by the appearance of things as well as the gentle scent of baked goods drifting out of the oven, she appears to be in here for a while. Is that over there? Is that a big can of beans? Something on the wall. Light. 
some fancy American oven and then fancy American fridge okay um hi those cookies in the oven were supposed to be a surprise I'm sorry but could you go sit over there or something and look away for a couple of minutes I'm just going to put the extra ones in the fridge so it won't take long for me to finish I promise it would be quick so look away for a bit please the pantry does go away right yeah, the pantry does go away I thought the pantry stayed for a while as you wish Judas smiles sweetly as I make my way back into the living room. Well, the person asked for you to go back into the living room for a second. May as well do it. She asked me the same questions everybody else has been asking about at college. Probably knowing we don't have much time for super deep conversation. I give her the same responses I've been giving everyone else, everybody else. And our polite little talk comes to a close. Alright, we should be good now. I'm almost done. I cleaned your swimsuit by the way. It's in the bathroom next to the sink. Give me a second before... Second to shove these into the fridge. And I'll meet you outside. I grab my swimsuit from the bathroom. And start changing into it. As I pull my t-shirt over my head, a putrid stench floods my senses. And he was right, I smell terrible now. I completely forgot about that. What's wrong with me? Good thing I was never close enough to Judith for her to smell this. Swimming in the pool definitely equ equa e equal to a bath. But at this point, it's better than nothing. I throw my dirty clothes into the washing machine and make my way over to the pool. August 12th afternoon. I see a pair of muscular legs sticking out of the pool, flexed and unwavering. Andy has probably seen how long she can do a handstand underwater again. As I make my way into the pool, her legs finally cave in on themselves and dip underwater. They got one of these little oven sinks. I want to admire the picture. That is not too bad. The thing is, I don't... Slower are so jungly. Huh? Do you see all the foliage around? I don't know if this picture is accurate. Uh, I don't know. 52 seconds. Poop. So close. Oh. Hey, Captain. Is Judy still baking? You didn't just leave her alone and there, did you? Ah, they were, in the they were going into the bikini. Sorry it took so long. I couldn't find the sunscreen. Judith half runs, half skips to the pool. Gin gingerly? Dipping. Or is it gingerly? Gingerly dipping her body into the cool, clean water. You spent that long putting on sunscreen? Why? It's not even hot today. You know, I burn easy. I'm just being cautious. I still don't get that. I don't burn at all, Judy. And doesn't the whole being my twin thing? Oh, I didn't even notice they were twins. Mean we basically have the same stuff going on or whatever muscular non muscular muscular no 
Muscular leg, non muscular leg. Muscular leg, non muscular leg. Hmm. I can now see that they're twins. I can see the eyes and the mouth are basically the same. Ugh, I never even noticed that. What makes you so frail? Frail is a pretty mean way to put it. You just... You just get outside a lot more than I do. So your skin adapted to the sun, that's all. Eh, uh, I guess so. And he shrugs and jumps a little bit. And does a front slip into the pool. After a second or two, her legs are sticking out of the water again, signaling to us that she's done talking. Judith, now even closer to me, sinks down a little and starts floating on her back. Hey, will you pull me around the pool a little? It's just, I'm probably just tired, but I don't really feel a whole lot like swimming right now. We can drift for a while, right? You don't mind? I don't mind. But I meditate for a bit on why is it that everyone, everybody is always gets so physical when they swim. Maybe it's because of the initial weightlessness that comes with being in the water. It's free in sensation, I suppose. Something relaxing enough to make even the most jaded, jaded, uh, I was about to say most jacked individuals, no, jaded individuals, feel like a, feel light and recklessless. Reckless. Or maybe it's just the chemical reactions in the pools making us feel loopy. Whatever it is, I don't really care. I drag my friend's body across the surface of the water. Judith enjoys it at first. Her bounces, her bouncy laughters fill in the stagnant Florida air whenever I move around in the in a way she does doesn't expect. But as the water settles and the heartless sun bakes overhead, things once again grow silent between us. And so simply I drag her around doing only what's expected of me. All I can think about, I thought she was going to get sunburned or someone. All I can think about is how you're actually leaving today. And how there's a very real chance I never see you again. Unless I keep myself busy, that's the only thing I'm able to do, able to really think about. It's been that like that for a while now. After all, we destroyed the seed. I guess there wasn't much left to distract me. No adventures to have, no sirens left to bed, no mysteries to solve. No people to protect. The only thing left in my life was the mundane reali reality, reality of your departure. But if all that's left is enormously, enormously, then shouldn't I be happy? Because that's what we've been fighting for, right? For people in Siren's Call to be normal again. That's why we risk, we all risked our lives. Looks like some adventure went on before this game, and I've never seen it. And it worked out, our gamble paid off. In spite of everything, the people here are normal again. And it's all because of you. Because of us. I should be ecstatic. But even though we won, even though everyone is so much happier now, you're still gonna leave. And nothing can be done about that. At least against the sirens, I could always fight back. I could always fight. But not this. I can't fight this. All I can do is get dragged along. You know, I thought about just embracing it. This helpless, helpless feeling I have. But I guess that's kind of hard to do when you have, you're have, you related to someone as stubborn as Andy. 
can't really be a quitter. I'm pretty sure that's why I'm opening up to you like this. It feels like the last thing I can really do short of just saying goodbye. That's still pretty pathetic though, isn't it? 58 seconds. Yeah, I don't get it. Why do I have to have so much shrimpy lungs? Judith lightly shakes herself free from the, my grip and looks, looks up at me. All right, your turn. You can slot around for a bit and I'll pull you. I slop onto my back, letting Judith grab a hold of my ankles. Her grip is tight, like the plaster of a cast, and yet she ends up dragging me around the pool aimlessly. Moments like these are really blessings, aren't they? Just being able to be able be in the same place as your friend, best friend. Being able to do all the all the nothings nothing you want with someone you love, I don't think there's anything more worthwhile. I really don't. But if this is normal, little moment of ours is such a blessing. Then why can't I enjoy any of it? Please let me get the final guy done. Okay, it's still afternoon. It's turning night time there for a second. Yes, it's time then. What in the hell is that? Who has... How many people in Florida actually own a rocking chair? I bet you it's like 50%. Yeah, let's see. Shame you couldn't stay a bit longer. But you could. But you're an adult now. You got junk you've got to do. We can't respect that, right? We can respect that, right? Yes, of course. Bring it in, Slim. That, this is really like a horror game. And it closes in and gives you a firm. Gives me a firm. And. Commandant, 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 hug. Almost went commanda, commandant. Thanks for spending some time with my sister. It might not feel like it, but trust me, you did the right thing. And he pulls away my and my hands. Me a water bottle. Whatever you end acquired, Andy's water bottle. Whatever you end up doing over there in Asheville, I want you to stay hydrated. Being an adult isn't going to be easy, but I've but seen what you're capable of. But I've seen what you're capable of. As long as you remember our training, then I'm sure you can get through anything. I see you soon. Right. Thank you for being my be my friend. Please take these with you, and eat some after you're moved in. She hands me a plate of chocolate macarons, macarons, macarons. Lovely, prepared as always. Judy's macarons, macarons. These should be your food, right? These. They're, these still, these should still be your favorite, right? It doesn't matter that you're not eating them on Sunday, does it? Sorry, I wish I could have made you something a little less perishable. That's why they're gift wrapped, I guess. At least this way, you'll have something for me once the cookies are all gone. I wish I could do a little bit more. So, I wish. Ow. Judith dives into me and buries her head into my shoulder. That must have hurt. You're a kind person, Oliver. Never let anybody. Let me check the time. Eh, not. We can spend a little bit more time. Never let anybody make you think otherwise. Goodbye, I mean. I see you soon. 
stay sweet. Judith pulls away and dashes back into her house. And as Spartan as ever gives me one final thumbs up before the follow following after her sister. Journal pages 18 to 24 have been recalled. There's still one guy left. Yes, we get to do the final guy. Uh, do we do the final guy now? Violet? I totally forgot about Violet. I didn't even know there was a Violet here. Okay. We finish off the last few people and then end today's episode. Watch out, College Park, I'm a pro. Somebody I did not recognize says something to me while I'm walking. As, you know, something double up with something, you know, waves, waves, smiles. Okay, let's see. I find myself at the local library. This looks like a normal library to me. Ah, the cool kid sitting at the window. Lucky for me, Emil is here too. As absorbed as he seems in his reading, I can't help but feel as he was aware of my presence the moment I stepped into the lobby. Ah, you're here, excellent. Glad you could make it. Well, have you kept our discussions down? Unfortunately, there's a chess tournament tomorrow happening over on the other side of the library. Did you finish your copy of the book, perhaps, per ch perchance? Yep, finished it up yesterday. There we go. Fantastic, it. Fantastic. There's a lot of juicy stuff in there. That's I really would like to dig into with you. Namely, Mersut, I'm interested to see what you thought of him as a character. Just gives me a second to go to the bathroom and then we can get started. By the time I take a seat and fish out my copy of The Stranger, Emil has already made his way back to me. After a brief acknowledgement of presence, he sits down across from me and begins reading. The, the technique that the author uses is remarkable. He writes in such a way that although Mesut is detached, he's really still quite relatable. Hardly the heroic type though. While he is technically the protagonist and is clearly in a pitiable situation, I can't say he doesn't deserve what happened to him. Tell me, what do you think of Mersut's greatest sin was? The actual murder, he shot the five guys five times. That's that guy five times. Practically faultless society has failed him. Hmm. I guess the actual murder. <laughs> I respect the pragmatic nature of that answer. I pure, purely le legal sense. Yes, you are correct. Well, one could argue that he is a cop cop -salad. In the violence against Raymond's girlfriend, the crime Masset is charged with is a coarse murder, of course murder. He might have been man manipulated by Raymond, but ultimately his actions are his own. So yes, you are technically correct. And like Ashton always says, technically correct is the best kind of correct. Even so, that viewpoint doesn't give as much to chew on. Don't kill each other is rather a elemental, elementary, 
message, so I'm pretty sure that that isn't what Camus was going for when constructing the work. Still, musing aside, murder is terrible crime, so I hardly fault you for thinking that Masut is it is Masut's greatest sign, greatest sin. I'm sure the most dangerous minds in existence have faced themselves as philosophers and intellectuals. Intellectuals. And in doing so, lost track of life and most simple of truths. So at the end of the day, that viewpoint of yours might be the only one that truly matters. Okay, we still have plenty of time. My question is, might have been a bit reductive though. I think our hero's fate can be ascribed to conflict conflicts of different factors rather than just one fault he might have had as a person. The reality is Merced is a man of many sins, so trying to narrow it down to one great sin is probably impossible for us. The only one who would know the true extent of his sins would be Masut himself. Or in that case, the author. I doubt outsiders like us are edukes, 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 judges, edukes. I don't know how to say that word. Quite weird. Judges. We don't make the best judges. Edukes. I'm pretty close to saying the word, I'm pretty sure. I've just never seen it written down before. Still, it makes for a fun discussion. I'm glad Judith was the kind of person to recommend this one to us. Emil holds up the book in his hand and smiles. As always, she has a remarkable taste. I suppose it's no surprise that her preferred reading material turned out to be so divine. It's rather grim subject matter for such a classy woman though. But I suppose this world of ours is full of little curiosities like that, isn't it? Mel checks his ch pocket watch, furrowing his brow in the process. I'm afraid we have to end it here, there, so. I didn't realise I kept you for so long. There are a few things I have to let you know before we depart, however. Mel gets up from his chair and leads in towards me, lowering his voice as he speaks. My hypothesis was right. The underworld is now completely barren. It's been... It's been... I've been going in after midnight with Ashton to check for hostile hostiles. We've scoured every square inch of it of that place. Unfortunately it seems like eliminating all of them did not have an effect on what time we actually enter. We still only have that ten minute window after midnight. However, for the time being I think it's safe to assume there's was at a casualty between the sudden death incidents and those monsters. So as long as things are peaceful back there, Siren's Call sh should always remain safe. Mail moves back from my ear, now speaking in a more relaxed tone. I'll likely be doing some more research on that environment after you left. After all, there is still so much about it that we don't know, so until that opening closes for good, I make sure our team is both informed and safe. I know that this is likely nothing you aren't already aware of, but I figured you would gain some degree of comfort hearing this information from me directly, especially considering recent acquisitions regarding your actions. Emil bites his lips and breathes out a heavy sigh. About that, by the way. I'm willing to observe if Violet claims claims any merit have any merit. 
If there is an objective and observable neg negative change in the population, I will do my best to record it and report my findings. I will even take steps to reverse it if that's possible. However, I don't know how much more time I have to gather data before the locker shuts itself forever. So for the time being, I pri will prioritize my field research. I don't know if you two, you two, are still together, but if you see her today, would you kindly let her know that I'm willing to amassable about this, amassable? Even after her assertions, Miel grabs my shoulder and stares intensely at me, as if eyes were a shovel digging into wet soil. Notice, even if you upsends, we will keep this town safe. No matter what is said, what ends up happening, we will keep you safe. You have nothing to worry about. Emil pulls away and smiles. We should probably return our books now, seeing as you're not going to be back for a while. Shall we then? We place our copies of The Stranger on the front desk and thank the librarian who smiles absently, absent mindedly, as she accepts our returns. Emil now likely does with his session at the library at done with his sessions at the library, escorts me into the lobby. Well, it looks like this is it, for now at least. There is still so much I like to discuss, but I suppose it's best for us to wait until your next visit. In the meantime, I will do my best act as your vessere. If anything of note occurs in your absence, you can trust me to mail you the details as soon as possible. Emil walks over and shakes my hand, giving me his pocket watch in the process. Thank you for the great dis discussions. I acknowledge em Emil's, em Emil's sincerity with a reassuring thumbs up. I see you soon. Stay sharp. Okay, we have page 15 to 17. Uh, I'm gonna take a drink of water. I'm pretty much out of time, and I so I go back to Violet's house and pack the rest of my things. And I load everything up in our car and all that. And we're about to leave. Miss Lawrence gets a dangerous weather alert on her phone. Apparently, a once Bene tropical storm off the coast has fallen to the size of a ma massive hurricane, suspending not just my slide but every slide going out to Florida. Looks like where I won't be leaving sirens call anytime soon. How unfortunate. Okay, I think I should leave it off here. Yeah, no new messages. Okay, that is perfect. I will leave it here. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, have a nice day, safe. Have a dusty apple. Maybe even tomorrow. Just need to keep up the vitamins. Very, very important. And bye-bye. See you next time. Have a nice day, see you. Bye-bye.